Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to take on the Corsair. It's a Shimano bait casting reel. Uh, it's the Corsair CS200. The CS200 is the narrow uh, width one. It holds the least amount of line. Uh, good for inshore, near shore fishing. I happen to like this reel. It's a good casting reel, and uh, I like to use it for uh, inshore bluefish and striped bass. Uh, some folks here on the East Coast like to use it for summer flounder or uh, shallow water uh, uh, drop fishing. But uh, I like this one for casting because when you drop the button down and release the spool, your line guide does not move. So it reduces the drag and, uh, drag and enables you to, to throw the line further. This one's in a little bit of rough shape, so uh, I picked it up at a tag sale. It was only uh, $10. If you uh, purchase one of these reels uh, in good condition, uh, clean and not uh, not terribly abused, uh, typically you can find these for around $30, $30 or so. Uh, if uh, they have a little bit of uh, history to them like this one does, and it doesn't look like it was well cared for, then uh, you can often get them for less. So I'm just going to go in here see what we got try to tune it up a little bit and uh, show you how this reel works. So in order to do that I start by putting some protective gloving on my hands. I use a latex glove on my left hand, non-working hand. Uh, I've told many if, uh, if I could use it on my right and have the dexterity and everything I probably would but it's not working out for me so <clears throat> I kind of leave my drive hand uh, uncovered. And right now I'm just taking off the, uh, the side plate stuff. I've taken off the handle, the handle nut, I'm going to back off the drag here, star drag uh, system, and uh, so when you do this you want to make sure that you are putting your pieces and parts in an easily found location like this parts tray, happens to be the bottom of a uh, milk jug, and also that you're keeping the sequences in mind. So here's three shim washers. Uh, tension washers for that. I'm just going to pile them up just as I got them out of there. And then what we're going to do is we've got the the two side plate screws that hold this on. We're going to go take these off. These are kind of indicative of what I expected. So this reel has not been serviced. You can, you can hear it kind of squeaking in the background there. And that's because nobody's done anything with this. And I suspect that what's happened is it's probably just got loaded with a lot of dirt. It bogged down performance and uh, somebody just gave up on it, decided to go buy new. Uh, and you know what, a lot of times if the reel can be found for $30 used, a lot of folks just say, you know, if it's going to cost me $30 to fix the reel, I might as well just uh, go ahead and, uh, and buy a new one. And uh, anything they recapture in a tag sale or otherwise, uh, they just kind of put towards the purchase of new. So it's kind of a shame it's become a disposable uh, product line in that regard, but, uh, but it has. Alright, I just uh, put some WD-40 on there to kind of free up the threads. I've noticed that there's some kind of salt buildup that's making it work a little bit difficult, and I wanted to do that. Alright, so if you do those two, then you're going to be able to take the side plate off. Oh, we should. There's one more here. There's, uh, this one always seems to be the one that uh, <clears throat> there's a block in here, and I always get the block wrong. I don't want to remove the one that has the block. There we go. Okay, so this is the back end of the, the working reel, and we'll take that off in a moment to show you how that goes and also to clean it up because I do notice there is some dirt in there. I'm going to pull the spool out. I'm just going to lube the back end here. I'm not going to take the whole reel apart at this point, but there is a burring back here. We want to make sure that that burring gets oil. And uh, the burring, I, uh, the oil I use is a Real X oil, it's designed for fishing reels. And I'm just going to give that a good soaking since I know it's been quite some time since uh, since this reel's been serviced. So I'm going to put the case in there. I'm going to go over to the spool. We got some salt buildup on the spool. I'm just going to go quickly, take a little bit of uh, steel wool, and just kind of buff that off. Now there's not much you can do with the case. The case has got a, uh, uh, a finished coating on it, and uh, it's been. Uh, dented and not dented but uh, banged up and scraped and scuffed and there's not much you can do there. So I'm just using a 4-0 steel wool here 
And the reason why I want to take that salt off, again, is if, uh, if I'm going to use this as a casting reel, I want to make sure that uh, it casts as smoothly as possible. And one way to do that is to get the uh, irregularities off the side of the spool so that it, it travels easily. So I've got that off. I'm going to go put that right back into the case from whence it came. And uh, we'll turn our attention to the side plate then. So the uh, I think the screw that I pulled out is the one that's the block. So I want to put that one back in. The other two hold the... There's a, uh, a pin block here that stops the uh, return on the anti-reverse. That's the one I want to leave in. I believe that's this one. So, so here's a good way to find that out. There's a schematic available. I always recommend that the schematics become the, uh, the go-to for a source. And this one tells me on a schematic that it's the middle screw that holds that block. So I have the right one out there. Uh, we're going to pull the one up top as well. So I'm going to see if I can read a schematic properly. This screw up top here will be the one that removes the rest of the reel. And we can push that through now. So this, uh, we want to set this down. And uh, this is what I expected. We just have a very dirty reel. So we'll go ahead and clean this one up. And we should be able to restore it properly. On the back end of this, you can see the buildup of the dirt as well. Here's your anti-reverse bearing. This is the one I was referring to. This is just a, a block that stops the, uh, the action on the uh, free spool release. And I just didn't want to take that screw out. So to clean it up, we can use a couple of different products. I just generally will use a WD-40 first. That's a good purpose degreaser. Uh, I've been asked a lot of times if it's a lubricant. It really isn't a lubricant. It, it's got... Uh, petroleum-based, but I wouldn't use it as lube. I would use the, uh, the thing to clean up the reel, and that's what we're doing here. So while I'm at it, I might as well get the what I can of the face cleaned up without going uh, too much. All right, and then let's go over and make sure that we get the sand and grit, and there's a lot of it here. So that's probably what happened. The, the reel has not been serviced. It's uh, just got a lot of dirt and contamination on it, and uh, that's just made the performance uh, horrible. So, okay, so again, we're going to take the ferrule off. I kind of like to do this in a sequence. Let's see if we can get the whole stack off. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Take this drag stack off here. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that do the right thing and make sure that they're reels are serviced on a regular basis and uh, when that gets done uh, you, you, you know you're good to go for the season or, or at least for quite some time all depending on how you fish uh, I'm always asked you know what is good service intervals and I like to think uh, it's all dictated by how you fish if you fish a lot and you want to service them before the season starts or at the end of the prior season and you want to um, make sure that they're ready to go. Uh, if you're fishing a lot, you want to do it at the uh, midpoint of the season as well. Boy, this is really jammed in there. That's why, uh, that's why we have the, uh, the problems with this performance here. So I'm just, just going to grab a pick. I have a couple of different things, but the pick is always a good one to use. And I'm just laying these out in the sequence that they, uh, that they came out of here. stuff on here I'm gonna make sure to avoid okay now we should be able to pull this up and I hope that this is showing on the uh, there we go showing on the video okay then underneath here so this is the uh, the kick I call it the kick it's uh, when the uh, when the free spool is uh, engage this this free spool mechanism when it's engaged it uh, breaks down here these are the uh, shims for the screws Make sure I put that off to the side here and uh, when you turn the handle then it automatically kicks back so I don't know if I can 
probably can't do it here. Uh, so I just want to make sure these are properly lubed. The um, We have a set of springs here that are sitting on the post. They're held on to the back plate. And uh, we just want to make sure all of this gets cleaned. I can just see how kind of gunky this is here. So I'm going to, again, take that main drag. I'm going to spray it down with some WD-40, try and clear the channels of the, the old grease. These washers still have a lot of grease on them, so I'm not going to go ahead and do anything more than that. But uh, know that uh, they should be maintained and they should have grease on them. These are fabric washers. You would use a drag grease. But uh, what's happened here is a lot of this grease is just congealed. Uh, and that's probably because uh, this reel just hasn't been serviced. Okay, so we're going to put the star drag, uh, we're going to put the assemblies back on after they're clean. I'm going to just hit the whole thing here with some WD-40 just to make sure that that rides well. I'm going to grab this then. There's two studs in this plastic wheel here. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, blue grease onto that wheel. And then we want to make sure as we reinstall this that those two holes in the kick lever the trigger lever or whatever it might be called, uh, that these two holes line up properly. So I'm going to set that on there and with any luck I'm going to be able to get those in there without too much of a problem. Sometimes it's just a visual sighting. So we got that one, then we have the bottom one that rides the main gear, then we have the, the main drive gear, we're going to go set this in now. I'm going to make sure it meshes with the spool gear. I'm going to grab the, the grease, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on that spool gear at this point. Since it hasn't had grease in a while. Then I'm just going to lay a little bit on the outside teeth of the main gear as well. And you can see that the, uh, the springs came off here. That's all right. Uh, again, if you uh, if you got lost in the process, then uh, grab that schematic. It'll tell you where it goes. Just put those back on. This one's greased well, but let's show you how we would go through this just in case. I use a Cal's Universal Drag Grease. Again, my hand is gloved. People ask why I use a screwdriver. I'm just a creature of habit. You know, people have said you use brushes and, and other things, and I'm not going to tell you not to use those. I'm just going to tell you I'm a creature of habit, and I use a screwdriver. It's treated me well all this time. And, uh, okay, so we, we work the grease in, and we put that main gear, uh, the first drag down, and we know that we have a metal one that goes second as we laid it out this way. Again, if you lost your pictures along the way, you can come back in and, uh, and look for it at that point. Okay, now this one's got a little slip to it, so we'll uh, make sure that this one is a keyed eared washer. And there's a slot in the main gear where that uh, the ears sit. We're good on that. We're going to go ahead and again for more for demonstration purposes than a need for it. And the purpose of the drag grease is to keep the, the washers well lubricated so that they don't become brittle. And uh, I've seen things like this, what we're looking at here. We probably had too much grease in there. Wouldn't surprise me if that's the factory. Because the factory likes to make sure that the reel doesn't fail in the first year when it's under warranty. So sometimes uh, you get a pile of grease on it the first uh, out, of, out, of the, uh, out of the plant. Uh, don't need all of it, but uh, if it's there, that's okay. All right, we cleaned the back of this then, and all we want to do is just put a little bit of, uh, I'm going to use oil, onto the roller bearing. That's your anti-reverse bearing. And then we can just reseat this by simply reversing the process that we had before. Lining up our holes, making sure that those springs uh, remain attached. I'm looking into our basket here to, uh, to get the two side plate screws. 
and this should run a whole lot better with a minimum of work. So this is back to that, you know, how frequently should I service the reel? Uh, you know, it doesn't take a long time to do it. Uh, and if you have the right tools, and in this case it looks simple with a couple of screwdrivers and a little bit of grease. Uh, you have the right knowledge, which uh, can be supplied by something like this schematic, then uh, it's not going to take long at all. So I'm just testing to make sure we got everything working, which we do. And uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease onto this spool shaft here. I use a blue grease. Again, it's designed for fishing reels. In this case, it's a pen precision reel grease. doesn't matter the manufacturer. They all have them. And uh, as long as uh, it's designed for fishing reels, you'll be fine. Okay, typically what we want to do on these with the uh, throws is you want to make sure that that throw is set down as you go to reinstall. And you want to trip this one down as well. So we're going to just grab this. Just line it up. Washer come out from the, the case. That was one of the ones that was sitting over in there from the handle side, if you'll remember. All right, and we just want to make sure that we have this uh, trip switch set properly before we go any further, and we do. Oh, it's working better already. Okay, so then if you remember the reverse on this for the Setting the rest of it up, we have the three of those washers, the one that just fell out before. Then we have the star drag nut. Now if this starts turning while you're doing that, just grab this with a pliers and hold it while you turn the other piece. Okay, and we have the, the little tension washer that goes above it between the handle. The handle goes on. And this it's got a little bit of dirt, so we might as well, while we have that steel wool out, clean off some of that. And we're going to have a fishing reel here that, uh, you know, somebody decided it uh, no longer fit their needs because they never serviced it and it got a little sluggish. We just went in in a matter of a few minutes here and uh, cleaned it all out, relubricated it, got it ready to go fishing again. So, uh, you know, maybe it's... Um, Maybe it's child of the depression's child who learned that, you know, if it has a value, don't throw it away. But uh, regardless, I, I tend to want to see if I can't make these things live another day. And uh, in this case, this reel is certainly going to live another day. We didn't see any breakage or anything bad inside. We see the cosmetics on the outside, which are something of an issue. But, uh, you know, if we can get by with that, then... Uh, you know, we can go take this one fishing. So, the uh, the reel is a nice reel. Again, it's available if it's a good working stead and pretty cosmetics and all. Look at this. What a difference. Just a matter of uh, some lubrication and knowing how to do it. And uh, we're off to the races. So, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the Shimano Corsair. Again, nice reel. Picked it up for $10, serviced it, and it's ready to go fishing. Uh, if you uh, find them out there in that price range, or maybe a little bit more, I'd say 10 is the low side of purchasing one of these. But if you find one of those and you're looking for a good companion reel that's uh, going to last inshore or, or lake fishing or any place where you might have a cast, then uh, go ahead and pick one up. They're nice reels, and uh, they're going to last you a long time with the right servicing. So. Uh, that's the intentions of these videos, show you how to do that so that you can make your reels uh, work properly and last a long time so that they don't fail you when you get the fish on the line. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Uh, I wish you good fishing.